Hi, I'm Linda Mason. Today we're going to talk about searching and selecting grant writing resources. There are about four types of grant, write, grant proposals to write. One is called a special project. One is an operating grant. One might be a capital and equipment grant, capital meaning buildings or renovation of building. And then the fourth one is an endowment grant. Now, special project grant is basically what teachers will be writing for. And not every resource gives money for special projects, but most of them do. Most of the grants that you will see that where the foundation wishes to support education will be giving it in a special project component. When you're searching for grant resources, the question comes up, my goodness, what kind of information am I going to be looking for? There's a lot of information to be looking for. So the first thing that I would, I would direct you to would be websites. Each grant writing, grant funding foundation or agency will have a website that will explain what it is they wish to give away. The websites can be a, a number of different formats. They can be a clearinghouse of information. They could include a database that would list lots and lots of different kinds of grants or lots and lots of different kinds of programs that a particular agency or foundation gives. Then there are a number of websites that provide e-newsletters or blogs, which provide some kind of re regular publication or of articles or information. And then another resource that you may look for would be personal experience of people who have funded grants, who have their projects have been funded. Some other grant information sources that you might look for would be an annual report of a foundation that gives grant or an annual budget request of an agency that is requesting a budget allocation from the federal government, such as the National Science Foundation or the U.S. Department of Education. You might look for funder guidelines by that title. You might look just for the agency or the foundation's website that advertises its functioning, its activities. You may want to contact one of these funding agencies or foundations. Now you can contact them in person. You can make an appointment and show up for an appointment and have a discussion. You can contact by email, which is much less personal, or you may contact these people by telephone. There are a lot of blogs out now for people who wish to write grants, and that's not a bad thing, although a blog is a set of opinions or ideas from a creative person. So when you read blogs, not everything is going to be useful or helpful. Some of the websites for grant resources are the grants.gov, which is, that is the address of the website, and that is the list of all federally funded grants. By law, they must all appear on that particular website if they are a federally funded grant. I work for the Oklahoma State Regents, so we have a website that provides free information, free materials, lots and lots of links to information informative sources. The foundation data book lists all of the foundations in the United States and organizes them by state so that you could go to the foundation data book and you could find all of the foundations that are located in Oklahoma. There are a number of websites that are grant information sources, but the main ones that have the large majority of all of the grant information resources are the Federal Registry, that is a newspaper that appears online, and it has notices of all of the federal grants in the newspaper. The Catalog of Federal Domestic Assistance is another resource. All federal grants must be cataloged by number, and that number is consistent with all of the grants that are in that category, and you can find all of the grants in a particular category if you can find the number. 
and if the Catalog of Federal Assistance was a printed piece of material, it would be about two feet thick in terms of paper. It is a huge document because it has everything that the federal government gives away. You have a number of Internal Revenue Service forms that will help you understand how a particular foundation gives away its money, and they are required by law to be public documents. And so they are posted on websites. One of the websites that I've provided here is the grantsmart.org. There are several websites that have the foundation IRS form 990, which is a record of what that particular foundation has given away during a, a particular fiscal year. And then we have this wonderful resource called the Foundation Directory, and it lists every foundation in the United States. There are more than 700,000 of these foundations. The foundation directories are available to help you study about a particular foundation and whether it's appropriate for you to select for your grant needs. When we look at all of this information, we might say, oh my goodness, there are 50 websites. What is it that I'm supposed to be looking for on this busy, busy website page? Well, one of the first things that you look for is the latest grant announcements. Those usually are posted 90 days to six months in advance of the deadline dates. There might be narrative about new or very close upcoming grant deadlines for projects. So that will give you information about the money that would be given for a grant and whether it's appropriate for your project. You want to look at um, the websites and see how many years a particular agency or a a foundation has given the money so that you can consider it to be a dependable or a stable grant resource. You might also be looking for trends. For example, we have a president at this time, Barack Obama, who makes statements about grant proposals fairly frequently. Recently, he has initiated a set of grants that support black males in a variety of different activities, including K-12 school activities. Right now, we have an initiative that he has uh, announced where community colleges might become free. Well, some of those would be grants for the community colleges to make those things free. Other trends might be to look at the the federal government or very, very large grant aid, granting agencies such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or the Kellogg Foundation to see what the trend in funding is. Um, there may be a prioritization of job training for manufacturing. There might be a prioritization trend on clean energy. There might be, as there is right now, a prioritization on things that have to do with the climate. So in your classroom, you might be more likely to find grants right now dealing with alternative energy or climate change than you would five years from now or five years ago. There are several databases that list everything that has been awarded by an agency or by a foundation. For example, the National Science Foundation Award Search lists everything that they've ever given away since the beginning in 1950. There is a report for all of the National Institutes of Health grants that have been given away. Um, there are many of the large foundations, even the local small foundations, will list some or all of their gifts on their website. So that's something you want to look at. What have they given money to in the past? What is their high priority to give money to? Another resource that you're going to find on, uh, in the internet is a grant e-newsletter. Um, that is a newsletter, almost all of the funding agencies have them, and they tell something about their grants, about their mission, about their, they might give a case study of a wonderful grant project that they consider to be successful. If you have a subscription to a newsletter, an e-newsletter, it will come to you in your email box and it will be a reminder to scan it, to read it a little bit, and it might be a reminder just to think about grants. 
I actually put out an e-newsletter about once a week that just lists grant opportunities. Most of them are for higher education, but I have many in, in this grant e-newsletter e that are appropriate for K-12 schools or for partnerships between colleges and universities in K-12 schools. There are others, the Philanthropy News Digest, the Philanthropy News Network Online, the Chronicle of Philanthropy, um, the Norris Consulting Group just gives over and over uh, descriptions of many opportunities for K-12 schools. The Christian Foundation Grants, there's a, a Good Search newsletter. It, um, every time you use the Good Search, it contributes a dollar or less to your selected charity. There's the Chronicle of Higher Education, Education World Grants Desk, eSchool News, Don Peak, which has just stories and grants available for K-12 schools. There are many e-newsletters. And the purpose for you to sign up for a newsletter would be to have some information on a regular basis about schools and the grants that are available for you. Another really good resource is to find people who have had funded projects and ask them for their resource. Um, the personal experience is a wonderful wealth of information. It will help you understand where to go look for your own resources and how to look. And you can find teachers at conferences, teachers in teams that have been funded and, and they will be happy to share that information with you. Bloggers are pe creative people who put their opinions up, and it is useful for you to look at some blogs. There are several, but I've just given you three to look at. One is Wild Woman Fundraising. One is Mazarine Trey's Best 10 Fundraising Blogs. Another one is Everyday Giving's Top 10 Fundraising Blogs. And your concept is to go to those and find one that is very interesting to you and helpful to K-12 teachers. The creative use of the internet has happened in the last, oh, I would say year. And it certainly is, is more prevalent now in this last four or five months than it was even a year ago, is crowdfunding. We have a number of companies that broker a teacher's project or a creative person's project that is put up on the website. The company, and I'll just use one as an example, Rocket Hub, um, will be the broker to receive pledges or contributions to that project, to fund that project. So the teacher would put the project in a proposal format, a very short proposal format or a video format. The uh, people would come to the website and see it and make a pledge or a contribution of a small amount of money and the funding of the project would equal what the total project would cost, like a total grant proposal would be funded, only it is crowd funded, a whole series of $5 contributions or $10 contributions as opposed to a single grant. And I think that later you should look at DonorsChoose.com as a wonderful source of K-12 teacher crowdfunding resources. And many people in Oklahoma have been funded by the Donors Choose. When you have decided on a grant source, when you go to that grant source website, the kinds of information that you should look for include a request for a proposal. It could be called something else. It could be called a request for application, a proposal solicitation. It could be called grant guidelines, grant proposal guidelines. Those pieces, those documents will tell you how to write the grant proposal, what is needed to be included in the grant proposal that you're going to be writing. In the, the United States, we have a number of free foundation centers. They are the providers of large databases of these more than 700,000 foundations that give grants. And the database is so large that it's cost prohibitive for everybody to have. So the foundations, online has given 
and set up a number of these in every state. In our state, we have four of these foundation centers. One is at Oklahoma City University Library. Even though Oklahoma City University is a private institution, their foundation center collection is a public entity. One is at the Tulsa City County Library. One is at the Enid Library, and then the last one is at the Stillwater Public Library. All of those are free, huge databases with a curator that will teach you how to search that database for the perfect foundation that will give you your grant for your K-12 school, for your K-12 classroom, or for your series of classrooms. There are a number of resources that provide grants for faith-based grants resources. These are really appropriate for K-12 schools because they all have needy children as their target or children to learn faster or better or more safely as their target. So look at the housing and urban development website. They are frequently going to be giving grants for children or in a faith-based situation. The federal government has actually set up a a um, website for faith-based and neighborhood partnerships, and it lists a number of grant resources for those, and it's at the White House Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Twelve of our 26 federal agencies give to faith-based organizations. There are a whole bunch of search engines that are available for you. Now, a search engine is a database that searches with your key terms. You may use a search engine to search for grants. Some are free, many have a subscription fee. And you, your school system may subscribe to a, a, a fee-based one or you can find some online for free. Some tips if you're going to be using a, a database such as the foundation centers at the, at the libraries is to keep track of the search terms. Just jot them down when you are searching so that you can find the grant resource again or use their suggested key terms. Not necessarily the words you pick, but the words that they suggest that you search by. The general grant websites are also very good for you to search on. Again, the Oklahoma Higher Education website. A good one is the National Endowment for the Arts. It is very well developed and helps you understand about grant proposals, proposal writing, and how to obtain grants for children that deal with the arts. Grants.gov has all of the federal grants. It also has many tips on how to write grant proposals what vocabulary words and terms may mean. It has a list of vocabulary terms in addition to all of the grant resources that are available. And then there is a website called the Council on Foundations that will help you understand about foundation giving. The Foundation Center Online is a huge website and it has many tips and tutorials on grant writing. A particularly useful website is the Norris Consulting Group, and they list on a regular basis grant resources that are available by month, specifically for neighborhoods or schools with uh, youth under the age of 18. And those will all help you in the type of searching that you're going to do. Now, there are some things that you can do without the internet to search for your grant resources. One is to find out who at my institution has received funding from a funder. Who knows about this funder? Maybe somebody in your building, maybe somebody in your school system knows about this funding, funding resource, or maybe a professor friend of yours will know about this funder. What can you find from the funder's website or a company report or an IRS Form 990? Those are questions that you want to ask as you're doing your search. Now, I suggest that you do a very simple search strategy. One is commit a regular time. I suggest that you pick a regular time, make an appointment with yourself, and that's the time that you're going to be working with grants, either reading about some grants, either looking for a particular grant, either writing on a particular grant proposal. I suggest you pick one 
federal agency, maybe two federal agencies, pick three to six, only three to six appropriate foundations, and those are the ones that you're going to be searching. Those are the ones that you're going to be learning about, developing a relationship with. You may even visit those. I suggest you constantly scan. Now, a person who writes grants for a living would be scanning every single day. I suggest you scan every single week during that time period that you have committed. Look at lists, look at e-newsletter, look at websites, review a list that somebody else has produced, like me, review my list, uh, search with a focus, you're looking directly for the particular thing that is going to serve a, a single need that you have in, in mind, or search looking for whatever's out there and see if that might be appropriate for you to turn into meeting a need at yours. I wish that all teachers would work in teams and meet on a regular basis. If you had similar lunch periods, then you designate one period every month to talk about grant proposals or grant writing, and that will help you. One more thing is to become familiar with the chosen grant funders before you ask them for something. Become familiar by visiting with them, become familiar by reading. Do not call them until you have a very good idea of what they do, how they've done it, how long they've done it. You don't want to appear to be ignorant and begging for money. You want to be appropriate to meet the needs of your school. Select local resources in addition to the foundations and the agencies. Look in your own locale. What companies are available? Look in the phone book or a chamber of commerce list. Many local businesses will give money to the K-12 schools as a tax deduction contribution, tax deductible contribution, and they want to help you. They want to help your students. They want your students to be safe. They want them to be bright. They want the schools to be high quality, and they will help you. Look around at your own peers. Who has funding? How did they get that funding? Look around in your professional organizations that you, that you belong to and see if you can find a good model of what you want to do and then look at that model and see who funded that model. Was it only internally funded or did they receive grants to support it? This is the end of my long list of how to search and how to select grant proposals for your classroom. And if you have any questions, I certainly want to give the answers. So you have a way to contact me by email or telephone. Email is preferred. Thank you.